Okay, so welcome everybody uh, to Love Your Thyroid. I'm, I'm really excited actually about tonight. I've spent the last couple of days. I'm excited, but not anymore. Okay, can Thank everybody you. mute themselves, please? Um, so, yeah, welcome to Love Your Thyroid. I, I, the last couple of days I've been putting this together. I actually done a couple of thyroid and essential oils and natural living kind of uh, webinars a while ago, um, not too long after I started using, uh, not too long after I started using the oils, um, but not for a while. But I sort of thought in the last few months that focusing in on thyroid issues is probably where I really want to go with my business because that is my story. Um, thyroid issues has been my life <laughs> um, and it's certainly what got me into using the oils and you know that my whole approach to I guess managing my health. So I've put together this webinar, um, we've got a series of slides, um, I think you can, you maybe you can still see my picture, I'm not sure. Um, at the end, uh, what I will do is be opening up for questions and I will uh, then unmute everybody and video everybody so that we can all see each other and have a bit of a chat. Um, but I know that even when you're watching recordings, it can be really distracting watching people eat their dinner and, you know, um, whatever, <laughs> blow your nose, all those things, and we see the videos, so I've blocked them. So let's get into it because I do have lots of... Um, no, I have to... I've got a lot of um, material to cover. So what we're going to cover is, I'm just going to give you a little bit about me, my background, my experience in terms of thyroid things. We're going to go over the thyroid basics because I know that there are people interested in this webinar who don't have thyroid issues but want to help people who do or might have family members who do. But I don't know about you, but I'm always needing refreshing as to how it all works. So we're going to go over that. We're going to look at... Um, whole body support and how we support every aspect of our body. We're going to talk about food because you know what would be a webinar with me if I didn't talk about food. Uh, I'm going to go over essential oil basics. I'm going to talk about what I think at least is the most important thing um, that we need to do for our thyroid health. I'm going to cover off on some favourite essential oils for thyroid, three different challenges. Um, as identified in the in a Facebook group I've got going, um, and some practical tools to try to combat those, um, and then some steps about what to do next, special offer, and question time. So I tell you, it's going to be a busy hour. So and I've got to work out. Ah, here we go. Okay, so my thyroid story. Um, you can see the picture on the left. That was pretty. That was me probably. I think it was. I'm pretty sure that was heading off to one of my law balls when I was studying law in about 1994, 1995. So, um, Alice, that's probably more than me you remember from, I went to school with Alice. Um, and that was just before my, thought, my Hashimoto's was um, diagnosed. It was picked up when I was 23. I'm now 45. Um, I think I look a lot better. I'm certainly a lot healthier than I was back then. Um, but it's been a really long journey 20 something years and I think for me I probably have had thyroid issues at least since puberty um, and I'm not going to go into all of that the root causes of thyroid issues um, it's a whole other topic really um, and that's not what we're going to talk about tonight but I just want you to know for the purpose of this webinar that this is something that I've lived with for my whole life. <laughs> so this is something that I've always, or at least for at least for all my adult life, I've been trying to manage it in different ways. I um, and I'll talk a bit about that as we go along. But it's a never-ending journey, and I think regardless of what sort of thyroid issue you have or think you might have, because I know here we've got people with Hashimoto's, we've got people with Graves' disease, we've got people who have had their thyroids removed through thyroid cancer um, or Graves' disease or other things. So um, this isn't a, a, a medical information about thyroid. This is my story, things that have worked for me and that in my research work for a lot of um, different thyroid things. But I want you to know that there is hope. So if you've more recently been diagnosed with thyroid issues, then, um, you know, you can get better. Um, you can 
improve a lot of your symptoms, you can. You know, I guess I just want people to know that there's hope because uh, it can feel a bit like there's not sometimes and um, it is, doesn't always come quickly <laughs> um, and there are ups and downs along the road, but you can feel better and I think that's a really big part of my story is that I didn't know that I could feel better and I think because I've spent for as long as I can remember having some having a thyroid issue I've never had a comparison to I'm really healthy and feel amazing now I feel like crap um, and I'd like to go back to how I felt when I felt amazing so um, I don't have that comparison but that's okay. You know, that's, that's just part of my story. We, you know, we, um, we learn and grow and develop as we, you know, as we go and we just, I just have different things to compare to, but there's hope. But what I want to do to start with is just go over, like I said before, those thyroid basics. And given that I am not medically trained and I should say at the outset, um, bit of a disclaimer that there's no medical advice here. I certainly won't be telling you that natural remedies and essential oils will cure your thyroid issues. Um, that's certainly not my story. Um, I still take thyroid medication. I do a whole lot of things for my thyroid. Um, but we're here to talk about how to make your life more enjoyable, um, how to love your thyroid back into, um, you know, working a bit better for you. So let's have a look at this short video uh, about what the thyroid gland actually does. Oh, hold on. Oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Here we go. Okay, so I think what I, I guess what I wanted you to get out of that um, video is thyroid is complicated. Um, it actually impacts so many different aspects of our bodies um, and, you know, our, our different bodily systems. And so I just want to, in light of that and understanding a little bit, I mean, that's really basic. I mean, researching how the thyroid works, um, I mean, there are some awesome videos that like are at least an hour long. So if you really want to delve into really understanding the thyroid, then, you know, just go, go to YouTube and just type in um, thyroid basics and there's some really good basic but lengthy videos. Uh, but the impact of thyroid on the body is, is pretty much complete. <laughs> it completely impacts the body. Um, and I liked this picture here because it showed... Um, the hyper versus hyperthyroidism. Um, now we know, well, the hypothyroidism is overactive thyroid. So if someone's, um, if we can just all mute ourselves, that would be great. Um, so, yeah, that's it. Maybe we have an overactive thyroid and hypo, sorry, hypo is underactive, hyper is overactive. Well, oh, we've been, been taken out of your spot on Abby's chair. Hold on, can someone We've got someone that mute themselves. Okay, let's see if I can do it. Mute. Chris, can you mute yourself, please? If anyone else isn't being muted, it's just a bit distracting. Um, okay, so hypothyroidism is the most uh, common form of thyroid um, disease, thyroid issue, um, and it that's Hashimoto's is the autoimmune version of that. That's what I have. Uh, so some of the symptoms here to look out for things like dry and coarse hair, um, 
frizzy hair. If you go back and look, think about that picture of me at the be you know at the beginning, oh, that was probably at the peak of all my. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say that there's some superstition behind holding it when you're not meant to. Oh, sorry, oh, I'm trying. To, <laughs> I'm trying to mute people and. Can everybody just please make sure that they're muted? Very, <laughs> very not. Very, yeah, full class. Now you can't come to Flemington without getting on a horse. Oh, I know. Oh, they saw it? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> right. Technical issues here. Just like, oh, there's more, oh, but wait, there's more. <laughs> you know, so. Take it there, darlings. Okay. okay. That was weird. <laughs> okay. Um, so, hypo, yeah, hair issues, frizzy hair, like often the outside of the eyebrows have gone. You end up with quite a puffy face. Um, you can have an enlarged goiter, um, enlarged thyroid. Everything is slow, basically. Hypo means slow. <laughs> um, so, that's why things like weight gain is a problem and brain fog and constipation and digestive issues because the whole, our whole system is running slowly brittle nails nails are still something that you know i mine aren't great um so it's a, pretty much where everything runs slow hyperthyroidism is when everything runs fast so you can end up with hair loss again that often you enlarged goiter you're sweating heart beat you know going fast unexpected weight loss um again the op it's usually the opposite symptoms to the hypo with the hyper Per. Um, you can often end up with quite a bit of anxiety and, dif and difficulty sleeping too with the hyperthyroidism. So just have a, you know, be aware of that. It's also worth being aware of the symptoms with whatever issue you've got because they can be a sign that things aren't quite right. Even if you know, you know, you've got things that um, it's just helpful to be our own best um, gauge of how our bodies are functioning. And so when we know when things aren't quite normal um, because we know what different symptoms to look, you know, to look out for. So because it affects so many different parts of our bodies, I really want us to think about how we manage our health in terms of whole body support. Um, this has been, I guess, my, my approach to managing my health for a long time now. Um, but I really don't think that we can um, just do one thing and think that that's going to be enough. It really, we do have to have a whole lifestyle um, of wellness, a whole lifestyle that um, you know, we're working on lots of little things uh, to give our bodies the best chance of feeling great and healing to the best ability that it can. So the foundation for that is eating right. Now this pyramid I've actually stolen straight from doTERRA um, and I think it's probably why I resonate so strongly with doTERRA is this pretty much is my health pyramid um, and was before I had anything to do with um, doTERRA. So the foundation um, for our health is eating right. Now we're going to cover off on a whole lot of stuff about food in a minute um, but I am amazed at what a massive difference food makes to how, how we feel um, and how um, just how it sets our bodies up for success, really. Um, I've run quite a few what I call 30-day challenges. I'm going to tell you a bit more about that as well. But I've got a lady going through a one of my 30-day challenges at the moment. Uh, as far as I know, she doesn't have thyroid issues, but um, she has, after the first week of really just eating nutrient-dense food and cutting out foods that are typically inflammatory, um, she's been able to get three whole nights sleep when she said she hasn't slept through the night for years. So I think, oh, my gosh, like food is massive. So if you take nothing away from today um, other than um, have a look at your food, um, I will be happy, but we will cover up on that. Um, exercise, we all know that we need to move. I think there's um, really mixed opinion, actually, in terms of thyroid issues as to what kind of exercises we need to do. Um, my personal view I've come to is that I need to be doing exercise that doesn't cause my body stress because stress creates inflammation and a whole lot of problems. So the last few years for me, that's been um, basically walking and Pilates. And if I could find yoga that I liked, I would do yoga. Um, 
Exercise has never been my strong point though. So um, find someone else that's an expert in exercise for thyroid business. It's probably not me. Um, resting and managing stress, absolutely critical. We will definitely be talking about this more tonight. Um, but we need to sleep. We need to be getting good night's sleep. We need to be managing stress on a daily basis, um, not just on holidays. We need to be managing that day-to-day -day stress. We need to be reducing our toxic load. Now that means our exposure to different toxins, some of which we can control and some of which we can't. Um, we can't control, you know, what we're breathing in when we're driving and, you know, what's environmental, but we can control the cleaning products that we use, the skin care that we use, the food that we eat. Um, so, you know, have a think about that. Um, informed self-care for me, that's, uh, about, what that represents for me is, is being proactive and responsible for managing my own health. So um, paying attention to my body, getting help where I need it, um, really actively managing my health and and then at the top there is the proactive medical care and absolutely uh, we need to get medical care and for me i see my doctor three times three or four times a year um, get re regular blood tests so um, you'll, you'll absolutely not find me saying you know you don't need uh, the medical profession um, we do we do need there are issues around that um, sometimes in being diagnosed with thyroid conditions but um, definitely, uh, we do need to be checking in on a um, semi-regular basis with our medical provi um, health providers. Uh, and that's the holistic approach. So if you just pull one thing out of that, like if all you do is eat right, but you have incredibly stressful um, work and home life and you're full of toxic crap, you know, then it's, you're not going to get as good a result. And the same thing applies when we throw in um, essential oils, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. Um, and we can't just expect them to work miracles <laughs> um, in the void of an unhealthy health pyramid. Anyway, that's my little rant. So it's actually, like I said, the base level, it starts with food, which is really all about the gut um, and gut health. So I'm just going to click through this just to give you a bit of an idea. Um, it was my... Um, thyroid, what I, I call her my thyroid doctor, um, holistic GP, was the first one who really, when I started seeing her about 14 years ago, um, told me that changing my diet would help and I didn't believe her. Well, actually, I didn't want to believe her. And so if on and off, I did flirt with going gluten-free, dairy-free. I'd do a little bit for a while, then I'd creep back in. I didn't feel that terrible when I did have it, so I couldn't really see the point. But slowly over time, like I really did start to do a lot more reading and research about autoimmune conditions and about leaky gut and the connection between the two. And so for me, the approach to food, my approach to food is all about giving my immune system the best support so that I don't develop more autoimmune conditions. Um, because as my doctor explained it to me, when we have autoimmune issues, our immune system's really, really revved up. And so that might mean like I hardly ever get sick, um, which isn't a good thing, right? Because my immune system's so revved up, oh, a little cough, cold, bug, whatever, fights that off. Um, but we want it to be a little bit more relaxed so that it has capacity if larger, um, you know, things come along that the body has to deal with. And once you have one autoimmune condition, you certainly are more susceptible to getting further autoimmune conditions. I've managed to collect two. I'm not wanting to collect any more than that. So that's the whole approach to food for me is all about reducing inflammation. So that starts um, for me with, um, I'm gonna show you here, this is the good guideline, I think. Um, and again, this is all about, everyone has to work out their own, you know, you do have to work out your own what's good for you. And what's good for me and, what, and what's good for um, any of you here might be slightly different, but I've, re I've read a lot. There are lots of great experts to follow on uh, things like this. People like Isabella Wentz, uh, Maritza Snyder, Amy, um, Amy Myers, Mark Hyman. There's lots of great, um, there's the paleo mum, Sarah Ballantyne, she's really great too. Um, so go, if this is new for you, if you're thinking, oh, I'm not sure about that, 
there is a lot of information and a lot of um, scientists that have gone into, into doing all of that research. So look for that. But for me, the focus for food is more about wellness than it is about losing weight. And I think having battled with weight issues for a very long time, that's taken a lot of headspace for me to come around to eating for wellness and not about the focus being on losing weight, but on about um, supporting my body. So for me, that is about reducing inflammatory foods, um, which is gluten, grain, dairy, sugar, legumes, um, soy, no soy. Um, now you can play around with all these things. Um, the, certainly the gluten, grain, dairy, sugar um, are pretty common um, ones to, that people will have issues with. Uh, but you, as I said, you've got to work out what's right for you. And I would say if you know that you do have autoimmune issues, um, then and that you find that though cutting out those foods isn't quite working for you, then have a look into the autoimmune protocol because there are some other um, foods that can be inflammatory, things like nightshades, eggs, nuts, seeds, things like that. But um, yeah, just have a have a bit of a look at that. But for me, that's a good guideline for um, that, that base. Uh, if you need help with food, I mean, we, we all have to eat right three times a day. And I don't know about you, but I like to eat well. I can't stand it if I cook a dud meal because that feels like a complete waste of an opportunity to eat really good food. Um, so that's what I, for me, that's where my journey really started was digging into really cooking delicious food that was within those parameters. Um, I do have a food blog called What Annabelle Cooks. Um, and there's lots of recipes on there. Certainly the vast majority of them are gluten, grain, and dairy free, um, natural sugar free, you know, mostly. Um, so if you, if you need some inspiration, my recipes aren't complicated. Um, yeah, that's what people say. I like your recipes over because they're not complicated. Um, I did write a cookbook a couple of years ago and I still have a few boxes of them sitting in my garage. So if anyone doesn't have one and wants a copy of my cookbook, I'll tell you at the end how you can get it. And that's got a lot of my story in it. It's got lots of practical tips about, uh, about food and cooking and things as well. Um, so the, you shouldn't be left in the dark or it shouldn't be, I don't mean it's easy, to try to address the food issues, but it's a lot easier than it was because there are so many great recipes and great, there's such great food out there. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my 30 day wellness challenge. Um, so I, in the past I have run 30 day challenges based on um, where we've all run it together. Like in September, we're doing a 30 day challenge. Um, what I've done at the what I have just done is set it up so that you can do it. Anyone can do it at any time that they choose to start. There's a Facebook group. There's weekly emails. There's a you get a big getting started booklet download that's got um, recipe tips, meal tips. Um, I don't do meal plans. Um, it's got all, everything that you need. So that's all set up. If you're feeling like food's something you need to work on, you might want to take a look at that. So that's, that's food. Now I want to touch on all the lifestyle factors because this is what we need to be doing on a daily basis. Uh, for us to be managing our stress um, really is a lifestyle. So just here are some different ideas really um, about um, lifestyle. So we can, um, we, to calm our central nervous system, take magnesium bath. Like get, buy a big bag of magnesium flakes um, and put a cup in the bath and have a nice relaxing bath. You can add an essential oil or two if you've got them. But the magnesium is really nice and it's great on our body, our joints and things too. But that can be, I know when I um, first started really working on my day-to-day -day stress, I really did build in baths quite regularly, even though I haven't really loved them. They actually did a good job for me in calming me down at the end of the night. Um, central oils, we're going to cover off on that. Gentle exercise, like I said before. Um, sleep, critical. Critical that we're getting good sleep. Um, even things like sunlight, magnetism. If, you, if you're a real sciencey, um, 
check out Dr. Jack Cruz. He's, he's a bit nutty, <laughs> um, but he's very, very intelligent. I mean, he's so nutty intelligent, I don't understand most of what he talks about. But, but um, he talks a lot about circadian rhythm and getting out into sun and nature and, and um, yeah. So check him out. Um, he's got some good tips. Positive affirmations. And this is partly why I called this webinar Love Your Thyroid because I don't know about you, but I have spent probably a lot of my life really hating on my thyroid and really, um, I don't know, feeling pretty negative about it really, seeing as it's had such a massive impact on my life. <laughs> um, but I am a big believer in affirmations and in, in um, being positive. And so um, I really encourage you, if you um, have never really looked into it, look into some, some affirmations and just start with one. I love my thyroid. Like I've got some affirmations up above my, in my bathroom and some of it is, it doesn't actually say I love my thyroid, so I need to rewrite it, but it says um, my thyroid is healing and operating at its optimum, something like that. So positive affirmations make a really big difference. Know your limits, set some boundaries. Like if, um, if you've got too much going on or your kids are doing too many different things, you know, know where the limit is for you and set a limit. We don't need to, you know, wear ourselves into the pavement. Meditation, not something I'm good at. Um, I do, I, but I need it to calm that mental chatter. Uh, for me, things like doing jigsaw puzzles or colouring in, um, for me, that's meditation that I enjoy because I'm doing something, um, but it, it does help me to switch off. So there's some different lifestyle things to have a bit of a think about. Now I just want to cover off on some essential oil basics. I'm going to keep an eye on the time because I do tend to waffle on a bit. Um, so super basic. What are essential oils? They're naturally derived aromatic compounds. They're extracted and distilled from plants for health benefits. Hundreds of different compounds. And that's sort of what our body, when we're using essential oils, our, you know, our body um, is using all of those different chemical compounds. Um, they're effective, they're safe, they're versatile. How to use our essential oils. There's three ways you can use your essential oils. One is aromatically, and when you think about aromatherapy, that's really aromatic use of essential oils. Super easy way to use it. You can really change the mood in a house or a bedroom. Um, you can use um, a diffuser like the one I've got pictured here. Um, that's probably the simplest way. You put in some water, add you know three to six drops of essential oils, press start. It's pretty much as simple as that. Another way you can use your essential oils, I'm not sure if you can see me on this, but like I've just got one here, Motivate, um, lives on my desk <laughs> for probably for obvious reasons. Um, you could just, you know, it's in a roller, rub, rub it on your hands, rub your hands together and just cup them over your nose and mouth. There's a diffuser. There's your portable diffuser. So, um, and that gets it straight into our essential oils into our olfactory system. So, aromatically is a really beautiful way to use our essential oils. Topically is when we're applying essential oils to our body. Um, so, from a thyroid point of view, you can go and do some research um, into reflexology charts and look at those spots on your feet or hands um, for your thyroid spots uh, to be quite strategic as to where you put your essential oils. Um, you should always use a carrier oil or some moisturiser when you're applying essential oils to your body. So, uh, and the other way that we can use our oils is as a food additive. So being the big foodie, that was a big attraction to me about using the doTERRA essential oils because um, I just love to cook with my oils really. So that's that. Why doTERRA? Um, I know a lot of you are already using doTERRA. Maybe some of you might use other brands. I'm not sure. Um, why am I using doTERRA? Because my beautiful naturopath, Tess, who I think is on this video, um, was using that and that's how I got into using the oils. I feel incredibly blessed that I just stumbled upon a most amazing company um, and the purest essential oils on the planet. I feel blessed that I, but I just stumbled into that. Um, but as moving forward using doTERRA, I love that 
um, I, I think doTERRA's values and mine are really aligned. I, you know, I love the co-impact sourcing and the healing hands aspects of doTERRA where they really give back to the communities where they where the oils are harvested and grown. They're, you know, they're just all about quality and purity. Um, so that's why I use doTERRA. But where do we start? Um, if you don't know anything about essential oils, um, probably the best thing to do ultimately at the end of this is to book in for a 15 minute chat with me. Um, but to, there's two ways I'm going to show you how to quickly get started. Then we're going to go into all the different oils for different things. Um, the Home Essentials Kit is doTERRA's most popular starter kit. Um, and I have put together here um, an explanation of how someone with thyroid issues could use the oils in this for different aspects of having thyroid issues. So you've got a diffuser there, so immediately you can diffuse oils just to feel energized or calm or to help you wind down for sleep. Um, you know, you've got oils here for calming and stress and sleep. You've got oils for skin. Often we have um, skin issues. Um, We've got things for overall wellness and just um, supporting our body's natural ability to stay well. We've got things for energy, we've got gut support, and we've got stuff for joints and muscles. So there's a really good overview um, of our most popular starter kit. You can, however, do a bit of a choose your own oily adventure. That's what I did, actually. And so what I've done here is just put together some suggestions. This is what I started with frankincense, peppermint and lemongrass. I started adding it to my facial oil. It's pretty much how I started, it was pretty simple. And over time, I've added other oils, I've done lots of research. Um, and so if you wanna do a choose your own adventure, <laughs> um, then really you can put together whatever you like. These are just suggestions. And you might find that as we're covering off on lots of oils, um, in a minute that you write down the ones that you like the sound of the most and uh, that could be a great way to um, you know just as you know just get a couple to start with and go from there. doTERRA does have a great loyalty rewards program so if you do want to try lots of different ones just buy, buy a few to start with and then you join the loyalty rewards program and buy a couple each month you can also look at some of the supplements as well. You know, it's a great way to um, earn points and free product. But I can explain all of that to, to anyone who is wanting to get started at the end. So the number one, so that's kind of like the essential overview, I guess. I just wanted to give you a bit of a blurb at the beginning before I started talking about specific oils for specific um, support um, as a bit of an overview. But what do I think the number one thing is that we need to reduce for us to be healthy? So this is my number one, okay? Watch this. One little piece of paper can have a remarkable effect. Stress is stressful. If you understand a bit about what it is, you'll be better able to deal with it. First though, take a few deep breaths. In fact, do that anytime you feel stressed. It helps. Stress is a survival mechanism. When danger appears, it can get you out of trouble quickly. Your body crashes up the gears and throws all its resources into getting you moving. Your heart pumps furiously to increase blood pressure, glucose is sent to the muscles as a fuel injection, and you become totally focused on what psychologists call fight or flight. Thing is, this emergency state is only meant to last just long enough to get you out of danger. But here in the 21st century, we stress about different things, and for much, much longer. Your brain and body stay on red alert and you'll be less able to think clearly, learn or remember things. Take a few more deep breaths because as you now know, stress is a physical reaction and deep breathing helps to counteract its effects. So what else can you do? Okay, 
top tips to reduce stress. First, get plenty of exercise. Let out all that locked up energy. Now, back to the problem. Get in control. Scope out the situation and how you're going to tackle it. Don't stress alone. Talk to someone. Socialize and have a laugh. You can't laugh and quick with fear at the same time. Get down, nature, on a big or small scale. And if your mind won't stop worrying, give it something else to do instead. So, stress. <laughs> So really, if we can reduce our day-to-day -day stress, we're gonna go a long way to feeling better and taking that pressure off our bodies. So I put this big picture of a big forest here because there's this, I don't know if you've heard of forest bathing, um, but it is a thing. Um, but just getting out into nature helps to de-stress. Um, so whether you're yeah, feeling stressed or even those anxious feelings, so if you are someone with overactive thyroid issues and you feel more revved up and anxious, again, like stress, so important to calm down and to relax your body. So um, it does help to keep that inflammatory response at bay. Essential oils obviously are great mood enhancers and if we want to take some deep breaths to calm down, like the video said, why not take a deep breath with some nice calming essential oils? Um, so that these things we talked about before too. So for what you for when you feel stressed, these are my pick. Okay, uh, you might have other favourites, and you can pop them in the comments if you do. Um, and this doesn't mean you need all of these, um, but these are my favourites for when I'm feeling stressed. So balance has always been a, my favourite. That was the very first oil that I remember Tess giving me. Um, was balance is the one that I would sit in with in the car at the end of the school over waiting for my kids and pretty much snorted out of the bottle. <laughs> it's really interesting because I think um, in the three years I've been using essential oils, I'm much less stressed than I than I was three years ago. I don't snap at the kids as much. I don't. Lose, lose the plot as much. Um, I'm just, I'm not, I haven't had a personality transplant. I'm not like a, you know, zoned out yogi, but I'm much less stressed on a day-to-day -day level and balance um, was a fabulous starting point for me for that. Um, so I always rave about balance, um, even though I don't use it as much as I used to. Uh, probably the one I will go to most now when I feel stressed is neroli. Um, I just actually gave my neroli away to a friend who's a surgeon, incredibly stressed. He has Hashimoto's, not that many men do, but this man does. And I had lunch with him recently and said, oh my gosh, you really need to reduce your stress. Um, and he really liked the neroli, like he has the neroli. So I've just ordered a replacement of that because for me that really does calm me. So that's my, probably my favorite go-to at the moment, but all these others are great. Lavender Peace, um, Restful Blend, Lavender, they're nice for sleep. Um, the Vetiver, I use it to sleep too. Um, actually, Clary Sage I haven't put in here, but that's another one I like for when I feel stressed. Bergamot, fabulous for that sort of worried, anxious feelings. Um, beautiful in a diffuser. Lovely, just dropped in the palm of your hands and that cupped over your nose and mouth. Easy Air actually really opens up your airways. So... That deep breath when you need to calm your nervous system, calm your body, easy air um, is a really lovely one for calming our bodies down. Uh, vetiver is amazing story about vetiver and how it's sourced. So if you don't know about that, go Google doTERRA vetiver sourcing and tell me that you, you know, um, don't ball your eyes out when you watch it. <laughs> um, but vetiver, favourite one for sleep for me, that sort of calming the mental chatter. Frankincense, copaiba. Um, now I've actually started adding in the copaiba uh, soft gels. Um, I take one morning and one night, and I think that has helped calm, you know, calm me down a little bit more as well. Um, and peace is another really nice blend. So all of these, you know, I think that's a lovely thing about essential oils is that we have lots of choices. 
if you don't love the smell of lavender, which isn't my favourite smell, you know, you've got neroli or frankincense or balance or any of the tree oils, you know. Um, that's a really nice way of thinking about um, essential oils is you've always got choice. So they're, they're my pick for when, you, when you're stressed. Um, we're going to head now straight for the big ones and the favourite for actually supporting my thyroid. Um, so this is where I started, frankincense, lemongrass, peppermint um, in my facial oil and I would make sure I covered my thyroid. And then I started reading and researching and have um, added lots of different things to I guess what I would call a thyroid blend. Um, these would be my top picks at this point in time. Um, but again, you do your own research and look at what aspects that is, you know, well, what part of um, how is your thyroid condition impacting you? And then you work out your priorities for, for what you want to focus on. But um, turmeric, um, the turmeric essential oil is very bioavailable in the body, um, really lovely for that inflammatory response. Um, oh. I want to make sure that, you know, the way I'm talking to that we're uh, I'm compliant with all the regulations of what we can and can't say essential oils do and don't do. But if you want to maintain healthy cells, and I think for me, um, having chronic issues, cellular health is critical. Um, I want to make sure that my cells are healthy. And so I take DDR Prime, which is an essential oil supplement. Um, it has things like frankincense, lemongrass, it's um, got a few others in it. Um, I probably take that now rather than use a roller, um, but you can, you know, I'm going to show you a couple of recipes, different recipes here. Um, so these recipe blend ideas, the one on the left is mine. Um, that I sort of came up with over time. I didn't make this all at once. Um, and I think if you have never used essential oils and you want to start using things to support your thyroid, start small, um, particularly if you're wanting to apply things topically because it can be a vulnerable spot for us. Um, but that's, you know, what I have done. Like I said, I don't tend to use that so much anymore. Um, but I certainly have done over time. Um, that's just a, an empty roller with... Um, Six drops of frankincense, three lemongrass, three peppermint, three myrrh, two clove, one marjoram, one basil. Um, you can apply that over your thyroid area or on your feet. For me, the thyroid, when I apply those oils there, I often actually end up in a, with a skin reaction. I think it's a, still a vulnerable area for me, so I would prefer to put that on my feet. Um, the image on the right is Dr. Maritza Snyder, a bit of a fan girl. Um, she's really amazing. So if you don't follow her now, start following her. <laughs> um, so this is her role, uh, thyroid support role blend, and she also has Hashimoto's. Um, so she's got lavender, lemongrass, frankincense, myrrh, clove. So very similar, very similar. Right. These are the top three challenges that... Um, my Essential Oils and Lifestyle for Thyroid Support Facebook group identified as the three top challenges for them um, with thyroid issues. Now, can we guess what each of those three are? <laughs> I bet you can. So we've got energy, we've got weight loss, and we've got gut support. So there's a lot, you know, we know from the beginning that thyroid impacts all range of other bodily systems um, but that might be saved for the full day workshop that we do some point um, for now i'm just going to talk about these top three so energy was rated the number one challenge uh, for people in that group um, so before we get to essential oils that can help with energy i want to ask you these questions yeah how is your food are you eating sugar, grains, dairy? Um, are you properly hydrated? So are you, you know, are you drinking enough water? Are, you, are your cells hydrated? Are you getting enough sleep? Because sleep and energy, oh, my gosh, completely related. So if you're not getting enough, I don't know, they're, they're chicken and egg things. 
Um, but you know, if you need more energy, these are the sorts of things that you need to have a look at. Have my drink of water while I remember. How is your gut health? You know, are you absorbing the nutrients from the food that you're eating? Even if you're eating well, you know, is your gut health good? Um, are you absorbing all the goodness from the food that you're eating? Because if we're not absorbing the nutrients, that's going to impact on our energy. How are your adrenals? Um, and I'm just going to throw in there, take a look at basil, rosemary and clove, you know, if you think your adrenals um, need a bit of love. And what are you doing about your daily stress? Because stress is energy zapping. So there's some of the things to think about outside of essential oils if energy is your number one thing. Um, but let's have a look at some um, doTERRA oils and products that might help support energy as well. The one I had going before, Motivate. Motivate is a fabulous one if you need an energy boost or if you need a kick up the bum. It comes both in the... Um, oh, Oh, hold on. Oh, no, I'm jumping ahead. Oh, hold on a minute. Okay, so Motivate, I'll try not to touch my mouse, I think, um, comes in the roller, which is great for applying to your temples or the back of your neck. But the essential oil, also good in a diffuser. So if that would be a good thing to have going in the morning if you need that bit of kick in the morning. Um, Elevation is another really nice uplifting um, blend. I really like to diffuse Elevation with wild orange and peppermint. For me, that's a really nice combination. In fact, I came across that combination because I made it up as a roller for my sister um, to support recovery from jet lag because uh, she travels um, a lot internationally and um, yeah, so I actually really like that combination. Anything citrus, that's why they're all stacked up. We've got lemon, wild orange and lime. I mean, but you could add grapefruit, tangerine, green mandarin, which I love. Any of the citrus oils are mood lifting. They just make you feel better. They give you that bit of energy boost. Um, and the mints, um, I like peppermint. You could throw in spearmint as well. Um, the peppermint, very energising, very clearing your airways will give you that mid-afternoon slump. So peppermint would be a great one. Drop in your hands, you know, do the hand rub thing at that three o'clock slump. Use your peppermint rather than grabbing the block of chocolate. Then I put the supplements in there as well. Um, I take the Lifelong Vitality, which is our um, basic supplement um, but the Mito to Max is specifically for energy and stamina. It is about supporting the mitochondria, which are our little energy um, producers in our body. So if you, I mean, they're just other um, supplements to have a look at if, if energy is a really, um, is a real challenge for you. So the number, so that's energy. Number two was weight loss. Or how do we have a healthy metabolism? And if you tell you, if you've got a miracle cure to this one, <laughs> let me know <laughs> because I haven't found the magic answer to this one. Um, some of the things I know, stress makes it worse. Gut health is critical. What are you eating? <laughs> so they're the sort of things that, you know, is worth having a, you know, a good hard look at ourselves. And sometimes we can think we're, we're doing pretty good, but sometimes we need to be, you know, have a little burst of being, you know, better than just um, average, I guess. Um, you know, what exercise are you doing? Is it causing you stress? Like, I know I've went through years of lots of high intensity boxing, running stairs, all that kind of, if I wasn't sweating and nearly vomiting, then I wouldn't, you know, wasn't, didn't think I was exercising properly. And I think that had massive cause for stress in my body and probably didn't help my metabolism. So... Um, I'm going to give you some oils to you, uh, suggest in a minute, but I'm just going to say Google the skinny jeans blend. <laughs> okay. Um, I think you'll find it. If you can't let me know, um, have a Google. So here, here are some, um, essential oils that you might want to include as um, part of helping that healthy metabolism. Um, Grapefruit. Now, of all the things in the 80s diets, I think the one thing that they got right was grapefruit. <laughs> um, fabulous for, you know, you know, for supporting that weight loss. And, I mean, I like it. Drop, 
drop in my water. Um, it actually smells really good, diffused as well. Um, and I have made what I've called my sexy body spray, which is a bottle of grapefruit and a bottle of fractionated coconut oil mixed. And you can spray that on your body, say some nice, lovely affirmations over yourself. Um, uh, you know, good for those lumpy bits on our thighs. Um, I think you've got to be consistent though. I've got to say I haven't seen massive changes with that, but I think I haven't been massively consistent. So grapefruit. Um, while I'm talking about thighs, a <laughs> um, bit of dry brushing is also good uh, so for stimulating the lymphatic system and, you know, just kind of shifting some of those lumps, um, you know, just getting a dry brush and um, dr brush in your body before a shower. So that can be quite good. Yarrow palm, pretty much a brand new oil from doTERRA. Lots of people finding that um, has some metabolic benefit. Slim and sassy, or actually in Australia, we call this one smart and sassy, um, but it gives you a bit of an idea. It is the metabolic blend. It's got oils, it's got grapefruit in it, it's got peppermint, it's got things like cinnamon, which I've also added in here because cinnamon's great for supporting blood sugar regulation. Um, so slim and sassy, smart and sassy. If you had to pick one of these, that would be an easy one to pick. Zendocrine because it supports our detoxification pathways and like we were talking before about reducing toxins. Um, if we're wanting to help um, those you know, toxins in our body rid of things that we don't need, then supporting our detoxification pathways is really important. And Zendocrine's a really great one for that. Again, drop in your water um, would be an easy way of using that. Turmeric. Um, again, comes up here and cinnamon, which I totally love cinnamon. And if you follow me on social media, you'll know that I love a drop of cinnamon in my daily cappuccino. So that's my favorite way of getting cinnamon. So again, you might have others. And if you've got other suggestions, feel free to let us know because um, I think we're probably all keen to know about that one. Uh, tying in is gut support. So this is our third top challenge um, digestive support really warrants a whole webinar just for itself <laughs> so i would say if you don't know a lot about gut about digestion um, and about the connection between gut and brain and gut and mood and gut and your immune system then start doing a bit of reading because it's fascinating there's a lot of research out now about it just do some research on leaky gut do some research about those connections. Um, the other, th um, a good place to start that I found helpful with that was Dr. David Perlmutter, um, Grain Brain, his book called, is called Grain Brain. Um, again, with the digestive support, cutting out those inflammatory um, foods and then adding in some fermented foods. So things like your kombucha or your kefir or your um, kimchi, um, those sorts of things, but again, not too much and not too quickly because you can really upset the, the gut biome balance too much if you do that too much too quickly. You might like to consider doing a gut cleanse and doTERRA actually sell a whole cleanse and restore kit. Um, so I'm not gonna go into that now, but if you're interested in that, just um, let me know and I can point you in that direction. But that might, you know, doing a gut cleanse and maybe the 30 day challenge, might be a good place to start if digestive support is, is a big issue for you. And again, if you're worried about food and not having anything to eat, um, check out my recipes. But um, here are some oils, again, you know, on that digestive support. Some of the, and you'll see some recurring themes here, right? So peppermint's been on pretty much every page. Turmeric has. Um, doTERRA have an amazing blend called Digest Zen um, that's specifically made for digestive support. Absolutely fantastic. Um, ginger, and, and you, plus the bonus of ginger is you can cook with it. And actually now doTERRA make ginger drops. So, um, you know, ginger's great for your gut. Peppermint is, you should do some research into IBS and peppermint essential oil. That's really interesting. Again, your smart, sip, slim or smart and sassy. Turmeric, black pepper. Your PB Assist and GX Assist here um, are part of the doTERRA gut cleanse. So the GX Assist 
um, you take for 10 days and it, it's got um, oils in it that basically clean, clean, or, you know, clean out your gut and then you replace it with your probiotics, with your PB Assist. And we've got our Lifelong Vitality as well, which provides um, some digestive support as well. I'm just going to do a quick plug for supplements. Um, I think with uh, thyroid issues or any medical condition, um, these sort of supplements are about forming a base level of nutritional supplementation. Um, they're not about um, replacing deficiencies. Um, so this is where we need to be you know, on that pyramid talking to our medical providers, um, getting tested. You know, see if you are deficient in particular things and you may need additional supplementation over and above, you know, what doTERRA can provide. Um, I know I take extra vitamin D and extra bits and pieces um, that I often get from my doctor when I see her. Um, but for me, these form a good base um, that the Lifelong Vitality... Um, DDR Prime and Terrazyme, which is digestive enzymes. I probably should have that on the page before, but that helps us break down the food in our gut so that our body can absorb it. So they're just some good things to have a think about supplementing to help give your body the best chance to, um, I guess, be the best that it can be. So what do we do next? We might end up going a little bit over time here, so that's okay. Um, I want you to take a moment, just even mentally while I'm talking, um, and ideally after we've finished, to actually do a bit of a self-assessment based on this health pyramid and think about what are the three areas that need the most attention for you and then work out a bit of a plan. Um, I used to be a life coach. I'm all about action. Um, it's all very good to get this information, but if you don't know what to do with it, then you've kind of wasted your hour. So, you know, have a think about what area in that pyramid um, is, you know, causing you the most grief at the moment or, you know, needing the most attention. So, and I've just given you some suggestions as to what you could do next. So, for example, um, you know, if you identify proactive medical care as something that's lacking, what do you need to do? Maybe you need to go get blood tests. Maybe you need to find an integrated doctor or a naturopath or um, you, you need to actually go and do something proactive to know exactly what you need, what your body is um, doing. Informed self-care, maybe you need to set yourself some health goals. Um, do a wellness consult with me. Um, take some responsibility, you know, really actually even just doing this plan could be one of the things that you do. Reduce your toxic load. If that's something that you need to work on, maybe just look at focusing on one room at a time, like replacing all the kitchen chemicals or replace your skincare or your hair care or, you know, doesn't, you don't have to do everything all at once. If managing rest and stress is really critical, you might want to really make sure that you're using your essential oils well um, and look at some of those other lifestyle factors we've talked about. Um, exercise, find something new, do, you know, work out something, you know, go for a walk, go for a walk in the forest, that might be nice. Um, and, you know, if eating right is a challenge, then maybe consider doing the 30-day challenge or really taking um, a look at the foods that you're eating. Um, so I just wanted to come back here to... Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, the oils and then I'm going to open it up to some questions and answers. So like I said before, if, you, if you're not already using oils, um, we can chat it at, um, a bit later on, but just have a think about whether you want to just buy a kit, like the Home Essentials kit probably did really is the best value because you're getting a lot of oils. Um, or you can choose your own oily adventure. Um, I just want to say a um, bit of a special offer. <laughs> you can see me there all wrapped up as a present. Um, I'm going to come back to that. But, you know, if you aren't using oils yet and you want to get started, but you've been referred either to this webinar um, or you, uh, by a friend who is um, a doTERRA wellness advocate, please go back to them. This is a referral-based business and I don't want to be taking work away from other people. So please go back 
if someone sent you to the webinar or sent you to me, um, but you've been chatting oils with them, please go back to them to buy your oils. Um, but if you've got no connection, not, not working with someone, then I would love to be your oil supplier. Um, and I have actually sent you all an email already, like that was sent out whilst we were talking. So there are some instructions in the email if you want to get started. Um, but what you actually get is you get me. That's why I'm wrapped up like a present there. Um, the benefit of buying oils um, through me is that you get me um, for some ongoing education and support. Um, I'm going to send you a little welcome pack of goodies that I'm going to make sure has a bit of a thyroid support bent to it. Um, if you get started in the next um, 48 hours, I will add a 5 mil wild orange into your little uh, welcome pack. Wild orange is a beautiful, happy oil. You know, we talk, talk about all those citrus oils, great for, you know, mood lifting and, ha you know, generating those happy feelings and cooking with orange oil is amazing too. Um, you'll get um, a wellness consult with me where we can really sit down and nut out what is going on with you, come up with a plan for you um, and help you use your oil and make sure you know how to use your oils. Um, and I've got a, an exclusive Facebook group for, just for my essential oil customers and provide you with lots of oil information so there you go um, if you want oils and you want to join in with me um, I would love to have you so let's have a chat um, afterwards so here's the next steps for you if you have thyroid issues um, or suspect you do based on some of those different um, you know symptoms and things please join my Facebook group. So it's called Essential Oils and Lifestyle for Thyroid Support. I have put a link to it in the email that I've just sent you. Um, if you want to join the group, you do have to answer all the questions. Um, I'm trying to maintain some integrity in the group, that making sure it is just for people with thyroid issues so that we have getting that support and feel comfortable sharing things in the group. So I'd love to have you join that. Um, if you are um, watching this video because you're wanting to help other people with thyroid issues but you don't have thyroid issues yourself, then please send them to the group. They're very welcome to join the group and I, you know, I hope that's why I wanted to make these webinars um, open to anybody so that you get that information as well. Uh, so go to your email, read the special instructions. If you want to have a quick chat about the best options for you, you can book in for a 15 minute chat via the link in the email and you're welcome to follow me online. So, has anyone got questions? <laughs> um, I am going to stop that share. Um, all right. Okay, oh, I can see people. I haven't been able to see all the comments as we've been going. So what I'm gonna do is um, I'm going to um, un yeah. so cool. Let's see if you can Oh. Am I there? Hello. Uh. Oh, hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, hello. <laughs> um, I um, is coconut oil good for your thyroid gland? Sorry, could you repeat that? Oh, sorry, I'm just gonna. Annabelle, you're muted. Oh, <laughs> I've muted myself. Is <laughs> I'm sure you're all sick of listening to me. Um, is coconut oil good for the thyroid? Is that the question, Julia? That's right. Yes, yes. Um, I'm, can I ask you to answer that, Tess? Do you, can you answer that? Okay, so in terms of coconut oil, was that Jen, Ju, Julieto asked? Yeah, Great. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> um, in terms of any th uh, coconut oil, has a, a, a few um, health benefits that other oils don't have. Um, and one of them is that it's anti-inflammatory. Mm. So any thyroid, any dis-ease in the body is anti-inflammatory. Oh, sorry, it requires anti-inflammatories. Um, so from that perspective, absolutely. But then olive oil would also be good for that. Um, mm. Yeah, so um, I would say... Um, also, want to know is how do you mean to take? Is it an internal 
or a topical yeah, on the on the actual thyroid. Yeah, yeah. go for it. Yeah, and you, yeah, and and use the oils that Annabelle cool. has recommended with the topical application of the coconut okay. oil. Awesome, thank you. Well, thanks, Tess. Thanks, Juliana. Great, great question. Um, great question. I'm just having a look down the side um, to see what questions that have been. Um, so, Victoria, you've said that restorative yoga has been really great. Yeah, and I think that's really gentle yoga, I think, um, the restorative yoga. Um, sometimes I think too, if it's, um, I have heard people talk about it as being Drew Yoga, D-R-U, but I've been lucky enough to find someone who's so good at modifying poses, even in the restorative yoga. She's just a little trio. So keep looking, Annabelle, they're out there. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's similar to yin yoga. I don't know enough about that oh, to, to okay. be able to answer that I one. Know the other. But, I know yeah. that. But, but this, is, this is the book, um, which oh, is okay. really, really good. And I think you can buy it online from, um, oh, what is the other place in, in Canterbury? Um, Stretch Now in, okay. in Canterbury Road in, in Melbourne. They've got a wonderful online um, <laughs> thing. And, and their shop I have to deviate from. I cannot go past there without popping in and buying something. But, you know, that sort of started me off on finding, um, you know, where, what I, where I needed to be. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. This is where it's great. And this is where the thyroid group is so great because we can all just share <laughs> ideas. I, I certainly don't know everything. I only know what I've tried. So I love that, you know, that sharing. Mm -hmm. lovely. Um, I think, Victoria, you've also asked, can you take Mito to Max daily or is it only for a boost? You can take it daily. Yeah. yeah. I go through different stages. At the moment, my doctor wanted me to put me on some other kind of um, energy boost. And so I try to balance that. Well, I like using my doTERRA things and she won't likes me to buy stuff from her. So I do both. <laughs> so at the moment, I'm, but the problem is, is that, the energy boost thing that she's giving me at the moment is a powder and then I forget to take it, whereas the Mito to Max I can just add in with all my other supplements. So you've got to, you know, try to weigh it all up. Um, Thank you. Thanks, Alice, for the cookbook plug. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. So has anyone else got any other questions or, you know, things that you want to have a quick chat about before I let you go off to a nice relaxing sleep? <laughs> I think the, I think the thing I find hardest is I'm nearly 68 and it's hard to tell whether the tiredness is just because it's part of that natural aging process or because I and I've also got fibromyalgia um, whether it's it's part of um, you know something else going on or whether it's to do with the thyroid and you just don't know and you can't keep running off and asking the doctor for a blood test every month or so it, that's the real hard one that I struggle with is what is my tiredness down to? Have I just been overdoing it or, you know, is something out of whack? I know. It's so hard. I've, I know exactly. I mean, um, I guess I'm a little bit younger, but it, it is still hard. And mm. that's the whole challenge, I think, with thyroid things is that the symptoms can be put down to so many other things. So, mm. yeah, I don't think there's an easy answer to that. But to go back and maybe really have that honest look at that health pyramid and think, okay, well, maybe, I mean, I know for me, um, and I do think food because it is that bottom foundation does make a difference. And little things, I eat pretty good, but over time little things will sneak in and sneak mm -hmm. in a bit more and a bit more and a bit more. And then, you know, you do need to that take mm -hmm. a bit of an overall look. Tess, you want to say something? Yeah, I just want to add to that. You're so right in that. I want to remind people just on that specific question about tiredness is that the very first thing that our body's asking for is oxygen. Okay, so if you've got oxygen flowing very well through your system, um, you are going to have more energy immediately. One of the ways to get oxygen one, you've got to breathe. So, you know, holding your breath, stress, you've mentioned those sort of things already. Breathe and concentrate on deep breathing. That is why things like restorative yoga, 
meditative practices, calming the stress system down um, is so important because it helps you breathe. It gives you oxygen. And the second way to get oxygen, remember your body needs oxygen to give you energy. Okay. And so the second way is to make sure you drink good quality water in, in proper amounts of water. Okay. Mm. Proper amounts of water. I didn't mention water. Well, water is a whole topic in and of itself as well. Right. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. I can't tell you the number of hours that Lee and yeah. I have been researching water. Yeah. Um, but if you can avoid water with fluoride and you have underactive thyroid, that would be a very sensible thing to do. Beautiful. <laughs> um, my understanding is that fluoride used to be a treatment for overactive thyroid so if you think about that and the consequence of if you have an underactive thyroid i don't really need mine to be <laughs> calmed anymore so but yeah water is a tricky one well in terms of trying to find a good easy water supply that is yeah not got all those bits and pieces in it yeah. excellent well thank you ladies for joining me tonight <laughs> um, i hope that it's been enjoyable and informative and you've got let you know if you just take one thing away from tonight that's really great because you can't implement anything um i will be sending you a replay um so if you do want to go back and um have a look at any of those um anything again you can do that um or, and if you've got questions then just ask me you've all got my email address um know yeah. how to contact me so I'm going to I'm going to stop the recording now and um